Welcome back to the Crystal Restricted Account. We are about to enter the legendary Artorius of the Abyss expansion and hopefully dominate with our crystal power. The preparation involved playing through the base game again, but this time in New Game Plus, since last time we did get the ending. This means even bosses in the early game can still present a challenge if you're not careful. The only thing I did differently this time was a detour over to the Moonlight Butterfly because I was reminded in the comments of my last video of a crystal item I forgot to pick up. And this Butterfly Soul is the missing key ingredient. Sliding back through the depths, we rediscover our old merchant friend. Aye, shall I? Because remember, these crystal weapons can't be upgraded and they break very easily. Then, after the gargoyles and Quelag, I can ring both the bells and upgrade a shield to plus 10 at Andre. I can't use this shield yet, but I'll need it for my plan with the butterfly soul. In Nanolondo, I make sure to pick up another crystal halberd. Last time it was my most effective weapon, but it broke so many times that I could really use a fresh copy. The inner cathedral of Anolondo was absolute chaos this time around. If you haven't played the remastered version in a while, you should know the Gravelord Covenant is more active than I've ever seen before. This made things tricky for me because I'm in New Game Plus now, so Gravelord infections actually do something. Someone else must have defeated this particular Gravelord host, and whoever it was has my eternal gratitude. Although rest assured, the Gravelords don't give up easily. We'll be seeing them again. Eventually, I beat the brutal boss of Anolondo, Ornstein followed by Super Smo. It was tough in New Game Plus, what with me being a bit rusty and their hugely increased defenses and attack power, but that was nothing compared to what we're going to face in the DLC. Once all that is achieved, I can place the Lord Vessel and unlock teleports. I figured the DLC was going to be very challenging, so I might as well prepare and have all the Estus healing I could get. Now we're close to unlocking the DLC expansion content. Within the Darkroot Basin, a many-headed Hydra swims in the lake. I use my Crystal Shield to block its strikes and my Crystal Greatsword to damage the heads. As fate would have it, there's a gigantic, primordial, demonic man, corrupted by the Abyss, who seeks the pendant for himself. He is willing to reach through space and time. Welcome everyone to the Artorius of the Abyss expansion. This is definitely one of my all time favorites. We've not only entered the sanctuary garden, we've also gone back in time. So some things may look familiar. On my back is a new addition to the collection. It's a crystal ring shield that I ascended from the soul of the moonlight butterfly. I'm going to use demon titanite to upgrade it to its maximum level plus five. And now I'm the proud owner of one of the most unique shields in the game. It has the highest magic resistance and can emit rings of crystal light. I also got extra copies of Logan's crystal spells. I thought it made sense to double up just in case. This brings us to the first opening challenge. This beast is a twisted white lion with wings. The first big lesson the DLC taught me here is elemental builds will suffer. All four of the bosses have triple and sometimes quadruple the elemental defenses of the other bosses in the base game. In this case, the Sanctuary Guardian has the second highest magical defense of any boss. But luckily for me, its total health in New Game Plus is only around 4000. For New Game Plus, that's quite low. Uniquely, this arena is a flooded swamp that's not deep enough to hinder movement, but it is deep enough to conduct the huge bolts of lightning. The other thing I remembered with these bosses is they punish healing. They can sniff an Estus flask out from a mile away. In the end, I opted for an unlocked playstyle, so two-handing a crystal greatsword with only a few pieces of armor for the fastest roll speed. And there are a few attacks which punish my fragility, mainly the instant charge attack and the lightning bolts with the crazy tracking. After a few attempts, the Sanctuary Guardian goes down, so with that beast being dealt with, let's move on to Ulysil Sanctuary. The only item in this area is a single humanity, which I picked up behind these gravestones. The next thing to do in this forest clearing is kindle up the bonfire and level up attunement. Finally, there's a kind old mushroom in the corner 
I bought some repair powder from her, just to prove to everyone that you can't repair crystal weapons at all. By the end of this run, I will own a crystal graveyard. This area resembles the Darkroot Garden in an earlier time. Here we can enjoy the peaceful nature setting, the powerful stone giants, and strange treants. Some characters we have a certain amount of familiarity with. There's also an opportunity to get a sneak preview of one of the upcoming bosses, although I kind of messed that up. The treants here are cute little guys. They wield either pitchforks or gardening shears. And it is actually possible to get the pitchforks for yourself, but not the shears for some reason, I've never understood that. Knight Artorius the Abyss Walker is a celebrated icon of the series. One of the four Knights of Gwyn who was defeated in the Abyss and tainted by it. Although when we find him, he's still hunting down Ulysil residents corrupted by the Abyss, still holding on to some of his former purpose. With 6,000 health and unreasonably high defences, we're talking nearly 700 magic defence and an average of over 420 physical defences. So this boss is one of the most formidable challenges in the game. From my very first attempt, you can see the sorceries are woeful. My once powerful crystal magic never felt so pathetic. The next few attempts, I went for a faster playstyle. I switched the crystal greatsword to my backup crystal halberd. I could have used the one that was plus four, but it was one durability point away from breaking, and then I would have had to upgrade it to plus five, the last level, and for that I needed a titanite slab, which I didn't have. It's also amusing to see how much he loves it when you try to heal, and I say try because he will impale you on his sword before you have time to swallow. Crystal soul spears are a gigantic waste of time, especially when my castings are halved, because Artorius bends my projectiles around him like he's in the Matrix. He just has a very versatile and impressive moveset compared to everything else, and also hits like a truck. On one of my runs back to the boss, I actually saw another vagrant across the chasm, which is so curious to me. I'm really starting to think there are players who are specifically causing them to spawn. I mean, eight years ago, they were a myth. People didn't even fully believe they existed, I feel like. Crazy to see how much more common they are now. I've seen two in a month. All right, that aside, we're returning to Artorius and I was experimenting. This time I switched to a heavier setup with the crystal shield. This shield having the ability to fully block his attacks. Not saying that all his attacks are blockable, some are not. And one of his attacks I haven't mentioned yet is this one. After losing about a third of his health, Artorius will gather darkness around him and unleash a violent explosion while giving him a massive damage boost. I started using this time to get in some homing crystal soul mass, but he was still completing his buff phase, which means he becomes so strong he wipes half my health bar in a single hit. A few more attempts later and my new crystal halberd shatters into pieces. We knew this was coming, it won't be the last time. So I went back to the bonfire and upgraded it to plus one. This is the only way to save a broken crystal weapon and reset the durability to 20. It was at this point I realized I was making a key mistake, which is funny because this is one of my favorite fights in the whole series and I forgot something so simple. I'm trying to interrupt his special charging attack. And as you can see, two attacks is not good enough. During this charging phase, his poise actually lowers temporarily to 90 which means three hits with the halberd will be enough to stagger him out and cancel this phase, therefore he doesn't get the damage buff, so I just need to figure out a sequence of attacks that breaks his poise. That cost me a boatload of souls to fix, because although crystal armor can be repaired, it has a huge repair penalty. He's still doing his damage boosting AoE attack, and I discovered one set of homing crystal soul mass combined with a running attack achieves the goal of interrupting him. I love timing my strike to land at the same time. It's so satisfying. Even here I'm getting grave lorded apparently. Imagine a black phantom version of Artorius. Guess what? Albert broke again. We're now up to plus two. Weapon durability is clearly the hardest part of this challenge. I knew which of his somersault attacks could be blocked and which couldn't, and each time he went for the darkness buff I was quick to stop him, I felt comfortable creating moments to heal, I was also two handing my halberd when I had easy counter attack opportunities, and now he's an inch away from death, and victory is within my grasp. 
but the trick really is to ignore the health bar in front of you and just do what you've been doing. So that's two bosses down. You could say we're halfway there. I went through two halberd upgrades and a pile of expensive broken armor, but I'm happy to beat this amazing boss again. The last time was probably seven years ago. I really do get some nostalgia from this fight, I think. Like, the community was so much smaller. There was a lot less known about the game as well. Welcome to Ulasil Township, otherwise known as Creepy Undead Berg, with ambient screaming. With Artorius down, we just unlocked the PvP arena and the door to go, which is currently locked. There's also a valley opposite the Colosseum, with the deadly black dragon we caught a glimpse of earlier in the Royal Woods. This will be our next target, although it's currently airborne and doesn't look like it will be landing anytime soon, so we'll have to do something about that. Ulasil Township has a local bloathead population. They can be found in packs and often attack together. So I like to break them up when I can, and to that end, this level has quite a bit of verticality to play with. This area is interesting in that it's designed in such a way, the further down you go, the darker everything becomes, in terms of light, but also in tone. Light itself is even a mechanic here. The developer messages encourage the use of light to reveal illusory walls, but alas, just like in the Tomb of the Giants, I am unable to produce it. None of the light sources are made of crystal, and this means I cannot open the illusory walls in this area. And that includes this one, which leads to a hidden room with a secret chest containing the silver pendant. So yes, unfortunately, that means I will be facing the final boss of the expansion without the silver pendant. Oh, and don't think that the Gravelords had forgotten about me. Oh no, they were still around, lurking in the shadows, cursing me when I least expected it. Halfway down the township is a mimic chest, and after dodging a few flying kicks, I defeated it and I find the chest had been holding a crest key, which is something I was hoping to find. Now if only I could get back out. There's just a few super powered black phantom enemies that have taken over my world, and man they do a lot of damage. As brutal as the effects of the Gravelord Covenant are, I can't help but love it. I wish this concept was expanded on in future games. I actually ended up finding the sign of the Gravelord who had been cursing me, and I decided to invade to get some revenge. Mission accomplished? I was actually trying to backtrack to use the crest key and open the sealed door. Up these stairs here is the big friendly giant carving his woodblocks. This behemoth was another one of the Knights of Gwyn, leader of the great archers and dragon slayers, yet now sadly blinded and imprisoned. None come close to his ranged mastery at least not until the lobsters. With that preparation done, I head back down the valley into Calamite's arena. This bat, as Go calls him, is sitting at a very healthy 8,500 hit points and simply has the highest defenses of any boss in the entire game. And it's not even close. 900 elemental defenses means my sorcery is drastically nerfed, and in case that wasn't enough, he even has the highest physical defenses as well. There's many ways this dragon inflicts pain, from fire breathing, to sweeping bite attacks, stomping on you with each of its limbs, and even tail swipes. There's another key attack I haven't covered yet, and that's the Mark of Calamity. If you stand in front of him, there's a chance he'll rise up and use telekinetic powers to make you levitate. If this happens, you'll receive the brutal Calamity debuff, which you can see above my head. That orange mark causes me to receive twice the damage, which makes being one shot again highly likely. I've been trying the same slower setup that I liked for Artorius, so I compared a faster one just to see, but even that isn't always enough to outrun his flame attacks. And yes, I tested out the Crystal Soul Spears as well, and it's easier to land them, but they do less than 500 damage. And I don't have enough castings to rely on that. 
And talking about castings, I tried two copies of Crystal Magic Weapon. Because my catalyst halves the sorceries branded down meant I would get two casts per fight. You heard that right, big surprise, my halberd broke again. I tried changing to a backup Crystal Greatsword quickly, but died in the heat of battle. That means the halberd is now plus three. I get one more level before I need to acquire a Titanite Slab for the final ascension. There's one more crystal item I hadn't even tried using yet, which was the Crystal Knight Shield we found back in the Duke's archives from that Mimic chest. I had enough Titanite material to upgrade it to plus four, which gives it more stability than the Crystal Shield. So my thinking was it might work better for blocking some of Calamite's attacks without all my stamina being used up each time. I opted for a fast roll yet still with a defensive shield, which I found very useful for blocking the head swipes and foot stomps. They could be rolled through obviously, but these hitboxes lingered for longer than I expected so for me this was more convenient. I was also finding success with unlocking when attacking for this boss because you definitely don't want to be missing between its legs. Ultimately it's a bigger creature so you have to use lock on cautiously or else risk the dreaded camera malfunction. But eventually Calamite joins Artorius in death and that's three bosses down, one final monstrous demon of the abyss to go. Before we head there though there's a chest to plunder with a titanite slab so now we have the safety net of one final halberd upgrade to plus five if it becomes necessary. Welcome to the dark chasm of the abyss. Don't get too close to the spooky humanity spirits and stay away from the glowing red eyes in the darkness. In this area, not only can I open a shortcut elevator back to the Ulysseal Township bonfire, but it's also possible to rescue the puppy form of Sif from the past in this cave of giant spirits. Once I defeat these surrounding humanities, Sif howls and drops the great shield of his old master. Can't use it, it's not crystal, but we can now summon him for the final boss. I might summon him on one of the attempts, just for nostalgia. I journey deeper into the abyssal chasm. This is where the final boss of the expansion, Manus, the father of the abyss, has been waiting for us. There's just a few humanities to clean up and... Well, that's now both of the Crystal Halberds at plus four. I have one upgrade chance left if I use the Titanite Slab. This is gonna be close. This boss has over 10,000 health points, which is by far the highest of any DLC boss we've faced so far. He also has the same magic defense as the Sanctuary Guardians, which is to say, very high. Manus is also the Latin word for hand, which ironically is what he's gonna use to beat me to death. Once again, my homing Crystal Soul Mass seems very ineffective and Crystal Soul Spears are doing less than half of what they should do. The other thing is this arena is very dark, so it's hard to gauge his range. How far away do I have to be for a safe heal? Very early on in these attempts, I mixed in something new. I tried White Dragon Breath as my Crystal Sorcery of choice. It was all right, I thought, and I could land it very consistently. It obviously helps that for the most part he stays on the ground. The spell has a very long casting time, but if you time it just right, you can even get some decent counter damage. Now, we need to discuss what Manus is really famous for. Once his health gets below 60%, he starts using dark magic attacks. There's three different attacks he can do, and each one requires a different strategy to avoid. This is Dark Rain, where he creates a rain of dark homing missiles. There's Dark Circle, where a circle of dark orbs are generated at the edge of the arena. And finally there's Dark Wave, which is spectacular, and it killed me more times than anything else on my later runs. This is where he spawns waves of dark bolts in a cone shape in front of him. It breaks almost any shield guard and guaranteed kills you in one hit. I did end up realizing that staying at a decent mid-range distance from Manus is ideal for reacting to these attacks. It's when you get too close it becomes harder to react Disaster struck again when my Crystal Knight Shield was obliterated by one of Manus's horizontal swings. It's not just the Crystal Weapons that break, it's the shields as well. I tried switching back to my old reliable Crystal Shield, but I got squished in the process. Next attempt, I continued with a Crystal Shield, and to be fair it worked alright, but it's just a bit less stable. There's a higher chance I have my guard broken, and if that happens, Manus can juggle me around into infinity. 
Just for fun and to break things up, I tried summoning Baby Sif. I won't actually use him to beat Manus, but I just wanted to see him at least once for old time's sake. The little puppy doesn't do much damage anyway and serves mostly as a distraction, but still, there's a boost to my confidence having Sif by my side. When he's low health, he ends up limping, just like he does in his future version, which kind of takes away the good vibes, you know what I mean? So we'll put Sif to rest for now. I actually got invaded here on my run back to the boss, which was a surprise. I didn't know if this location would be all too popular. It was actually really satisfying though, seeing how powerful my Crystal Soul Spears normally are. How they should be, after fighting these resistant DLC bosses for so long, I almost forgot. When it comes to Manus, I realised the main thing was the dark attacks. I just hadn't been avoiding it properly. But suddenly I realised you could just block it. And I felt like a fool for taking so long to try it, but I'd just been remembering the fact that dark magic breaks through shield stamina really well. But in this case my shield was good enough, so this really changed everything. Once I had a working counter for all three possible dark magic attacks, the whole fight clicked into place. The final boss of the Abyss expansion defeated. A fight made much more awkward with the crystal restrictions and lack of a silver talisman, but all the more satisfying for it. A quick inventory check tells me both of my plus four crystal halberds were nearly broken. I've also gone through around three crystal great swords and a crystal straight sword and spent thousands on maintaining my crystal armor throughout this playthrough. I'd like to thank the Eastwood Grain Ring for being the MVP and shout out to all the Gravelord servants for the jump scares. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this challenge and I'll catch you in the next one. So grossly incandescent.